If you're going to conceptualize your system as a structural component of the different layers of uh, logical architecture that you define for your system in its scope, uh, a recommended method for doing that is to first start by recognizing that you've got to manage certain things. Every system has stocks of things that it manages. So you're talking about a stock. Stock is typically represented as the box. Um, and the, the box tells you what it is a stock of. So if I have a stock of inventory, okay, then all the stuff coming in is new inventory. And all the stuff coming out is basically outbound inventory. It's inventory I don't have anymore. So notice that in the creation of a stock and flow, I tend to have a noun someplace in the center, and that noun is represented in my flows because that's the stuff that's flowing in and out of my stock. Um, that's the way we're using it here in terms of our scoping. So our emphasis tends to be on the adjective that modifies that. That's not the only way to draw a stock and flow. We'll look at others where stocks are more like compound entities that can store a lot of different things. Um, but uh, for scoping purposes, we like to think in terms of a stock being just the thing our system has to manage that there may be more or less of. That's the criteria for knowing you have a stock. It could be physical stuff, it could be logical stuff, it could be information. But if your system is trying to manage it, and there could be more of them or fewer of them, stock and flow is a useful way um, to be able to think about that. Because while the inventory needs a physical space to go, it turns out that both every flow in and out of the stock and flow is a function in your system. So if you're doing the facility of where you're gonna put the inventory and the work design of how you're gonna manage the inventory, stock and flow points to both as we go. So let's back away from that particular illustrative example and just take a look at our shopping mall system and what are the stocks that may be relevant to that. Well, if we're doing the system for a management company, they may own more than one mall. So they, they wanna answer questions like, how many malls do we have? Okay, so they're going to define a stock of malls. Okay. So I, I know there's variable malls coming in. New malls come from someplace. Okay, and, and old or obsolete malls are retired. You'll see in very simple stock and flow, it's not uncommon to not label the arrows because the context makes it obvious what you must be talking about. But particularly when there are lots of ways to get malls. We could have a mall that this management company acquires. Okay, it's an acquired mall as opposed to building a new one. Uh, and so if there's more than one flow, it's very important to label these things as you, as you see your way through. Uh, but a retired mall might be one that closes and you're not gonna use it anymore. So the adjectives matter. Remember, each arrow in the stock and flow diagram is a function in the system that you're trying to talk about. So this diagram says that the function you have to perform to put a new mall into service is gonna be different than the function you would have to, to perform to put an acquired mall into service. Uh, there may be lots of components of those functions that are shared, uh, but they are in fact two distinct functions as we see our way through. So the management company is managing a collection of malls um, and each of those malls is a collection of the wings that make up that mall, what I called earlier the cluster. So you have new wings coming in and obsolete wings going away. So that's the case where I might not even bother to label them because this year that mall has four wings and thanks to a construction project I'm doing this year, next year it's gonna have five wings. So there's a process through which we get new wings and we retire wings. It could also be a process by which we completely refurbish or remodel a wing. I tend to represent those um, as flows out and back in um, to the stock because the wing itself never left the stock. I'm just making such a fundamental change that I want to record that in my stock and flow. So I know I've got a set of work procedures I'll need for how to basically record and manage a new wing, how to record and manage one that I'm refurbishing and one that I'm actually retiring as I see my way through. So if I continue then this, the wing the wings were, co were collections of stores. New anchor stores, new regular stores, new kiosks. Uh, I might need different procedures for those as I go through, but again, I'm gonna keep it real simple until I need it. 
Uh, so, I'm, so I'm coming up through those layers of operational detail that we define for our system. The physical facility gets defined up to this store level, and then I've got to turn it into uh, the real stores, because the stores I'm talking about in this stock are the ones that were in my physical diagram as we remodeled the anchor store. So each of these boxes is a store. But then the question is, what actual store is in each of those boxes? So really, I'm managing a collection of leases okay, to the stores in my model. So I get the new leases, the expired leases, and maybe I can record the renewed leases. And the, the mission of my system was to manage those leases and, ma and maximize the rent. So a property I want to know about each is the rent. On a monthly or annual basis, what kind of rent am I collecting on that? And that, again, that's one of the things I'm trying to maximize. So it's important in your thinking about your scoping of your system and conceptualization of it, that you end up somewhere in your diagram recording the attributes that you're saying your system is all about. And the rent on the leases, the frequency of leases, the renewal rates. So I want another renewal rate coming through. Um, maybe I'll record that on my stock and flow. So if I get high rents on high renewal rates, I have a very, very successful mall going through. So that gets me kind of to that level as I'm seeing my way through. Um, and then I get to the distinction of um, I'm going to have a series of employees in the mall. Now here I'm talking about the um, employees of them all. So how many employees do I have in my engineering, my housekeeping, and my operational departments for sales, things of that nature. So I have to manage my employees. There were also, if you will, at the operational layer, you have to have employees in the stores, but they're not, they're not employees of, of the mall per se, but I do care about them. So I might want to know the, the number of store employees who are on site. Okay, so I'm, not, I'm not trying to manage all the employees for all the stores, but at any given time as the mall is open, I need to know that the mall is a repository of not just my potential 100 employees, um, but also the 500 mall and store employees who might be on site. So, you know, so they go on shift and they enter the mall and they come off shift at the, as they leave them all. So I have those two classes of employees that I'm going to manage. For emergency management purposes, I need to know who's in the building. So it's my mall employees plus the store employees as they go through. So that's a way to kind of model that kind of work uh, as I see my way, my way through the model. So that gets me up through uh, my merchand merchandises and services. Uh, those are, for the most part, taking place within the stores, and I'm not too concerned about managing those as a mall employee. Um, but um, I may need to get into some of that as I go through because I'm going to want to know what kind of stuff each, each uh, store sells that goes through. So, for instance, I might be dedicating certain product categories to my wings or to the store. So if I know the product category of the store, okay, maybe I can organize things. So there might be a wing that I call a food court where the preponderance of stores I put in that wing are food outlets. That doesn't mean there aren't food outlets elsewhere in the mall, but I might have a wing that's kind of devoted um, to food outlets. I might have a wing that's devoted to premium stores, for instance. I might have a wing that's devoted to um, entertainment or movies, things of that nature. Or I just have a mix of things going through. So I, I want to be able to model the system to be any kind of mall I want, um, but I start capturing some of those characteristics as I go through. So look at some of the more mundane stuff. Uh, the mall has, out, has a collection of waste baskets or waste bins, okay. which, come, which come in and out. So I have new waste bins that I place and old waste bins. So if my bins tend to be overflowing, my mall management is going to tend to get more of them. If half the bins are always empty in certain parts of the mall, I might remove some of them and have slightly fewer. But the waste bin is a demand. My housekeeping staff has to go empty them. So I've got waste bins going on. I've got dumpsters okay, out in the back as I go through. So I'm just looking for ways to capture knowledge of what do I have as I go through. Um, the next part of the lecture, I'm going to deal with why waste bins and dumpsters are recorded and why typically all of these stocks are recorded in the plural. 
So I'm dealing with the facility management coming in. So when I say the dumpsters could be new or uh, retired, I'm not talking about what's in the dumpster. I'm not talking about a dumpster as a stock. I'm talking about my mall's stock of dumpsters. How many dumpsters are there outside in the waste area? Three, four, five, such that the trucks come and pick up my bins every day. And the cost of solid waste management is largely the cost of how many bins does the waste management company have to pick up and empty on a regular basis. Um, the, waste, the waste bins stock is um, how many waste baskets do I have? Like do, uh, the mall has a stock of seating. Okay, where I add seating to the mall, I, I better have lots of seating in a, a wing that has a food court in it and less seating elsewhere. But I do want seating throughout the mall as I see my, as I see my design shaping up for the mall. If I go back to my physical diagram, I want to make sure that there are little bench areas or seating areas scattered all over the mall that people can sit down in while they're waiting for a fellow shopper. I'm trying to create amenities that will prevent people from leaving the mall because they're tired or they're bored while someone they're with is trying to shop more than they wanted to shop. So seating is also a stock. So a lot of this is about the facility. What are the facilities? It can be as big as how many malls do you have and as small as how many dumpsters do you have out back. But all of these things coordinate and help me understand the basic scope of the facility that is the shopping mall. And I've captured it down to that level of detail where I know what it is that the mall company is trying to optimize and maximize. So if you don't see the thing you're trying to maximize within the stocks and flows you're trying to model, you're not done. You can't design a system that doesn't include as part of its definition the very thing that the mission of the system has you focusing on. So looking through the different stocks, go back through your decom diagram of the system that you drew earlier and go back and model um, all the different pieces. Make sure all the different pieces of the model that you model are represented in the stocks. Uh, the reason we do it both ways is because this diagram doesn't tell you what the functions are, but this diagram does. Because every arrow in every diagram is a function of the system. You have, the mall manager has to have a way to order more dumpsters and have them delivered. It's very, very important. You can't put stuff in a dumpster in your housekeeping processes if you don't have dumpsters. You can't put have customers throw things in a waste bin if you don't have waste bins. So you have to account for the things in the facility before you can start using them in your work processes carrying through. And we'll see that in the next part of the lecture.